program. It's a program of its own and it does its own thing. So directly accessing it would never work. You need to actually pull that address. So what we'll do is we'll create a variable called, did I make it int star pi pointer? Oh yeah, I did, okay. So let's say int i pointer and we can initialize it, it doesn't really matter. And then instead of doing int star pi pointer in the, in the function call, we'll actually call the address of i pointer because these two are corresponding with each other. And it's kind of hard to explain, but that's the best I can explain it right now. It's, they work together and int star pi pointer actually sends the data to uh, i pointer in the main code section because it's pulling the address of that pointer. And then let's say cout i pointer. Okay, let's try to execute that and see what happens. Make sure we don't get any errors. Oh, there were build errors. Ooh, a lot. I screwed up something. I'll be right back. All right, okay, we're back. Uh, all I did, all I forgot to do was include Windows.h. But while I was away, I added actually a couple of things. I added two more pointers uh, in here and here. And then instead of doing declaring variables inside here, I actually did cnp star pi times one, star pi times two, and then changed that in there. And that looks kind of weird, but it's the pointer times the pointer. And then I actually called all three in here. So as you can see, I called the address of i times one, i times two, and i pointer. And then uh, I now have pulled the addresses of all those three variables and put them into here, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that's how that works. I'll show you guys really quick. Uh, Oh, I'm not sure how this is going to work. I should probably get a full screen. Uh, it was it went into full screen there, but okay. So we'll do i1 times i2, so 12, 12. So the function actually pulls the pointers back, and then they're reused in the main function. And I know in this instance it actually doesn't seem like it's really worth it, but it is. Trust me. Okay. So in the future, you're going to want to do it all the time. Okay. Now the last thing that I'm going to do now is. Uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, change text colors. And this is actually fairly simple uh, as long as you understand how functions work. Okay, so let's say we'll go handle h console and then you're so you're calling h console uh, and then h console equals get std handle uh, std out put buffer. Oh, you know what? It's not buffer. Sorry, it's handle. Uh, and then, uh, okay, so that's actually, you, this is your call so that you can use uh, uh, text attributes. So you might want to put that into the memory as much as you can. Uh, and then you're actually making your calls separate. So let's say you want to change the text color of this. Uh, and that's all you want to change. You don't want to change anything else. Everything else can stay white. Then you'd actually do set console text attribute. And then you'd be calling h console. And then your color. So let's say we want to do color 25. Okay, that'll actually change it. Now it's going to go full screen again really quick, but I'll change it back. Okay. So you go input i1 and i2, so we'll do 12 times 12 again. And as you can see, it changed just that and nothing else. So uh, with that being said, you guys can try it out. Uh, give me your comments and input on uh, reconnetworks.com if you're confused about anything. Uh, I wanted to make this fairly quick, so um, OK. Uh, again, it's just, like, it's just like system color, so uh, 25. 100, they're all different combinations of colors that you can just play around with. 1 to 15 is solid colors in the foreground and nothing in the background, and everything else is combinations. So, okay, that's it for today. Have a good one.